brushes with death change you. Trump understands he had an angel on his shoulder and the country feels blessed. But we still have a lot of questions. And the feds, possibly on purpose, are making this more confusing. Even though NBC reports that the Secret Service had flagged that white roof building as a security vulnerability, the Secret Service saying tonight that they never swept it. They say they relied on local cops to handle it. This building, the American Glass Research Building, is suspicious. ABC reporting that a local police tactical team was using the building as a staging area to watch the crowd. We're also hearing from ABC that Crooks did not use a ladder to reach the roof. So how do you get up there? Is he Spider-Man? How'd the shooter gain access to a building that local police tactical team was using as a security perch? A CNN report says ABC's wrong. Crooks bought and used the ladder. And if that's true, how did nobody see a man carrying a rifle and a ladder walk to a building that law enforcement was using to guard the president? Sources tell former Secret Service agent Dan Bongino that police were chasing the shooter around before he got near the roof. Here's another thing I'm hearing from sources, that this subject, they, are, they had been monitoring him since he came in around that, that external perimeter area. This subject it was the shooter. They lost track of him, apparently, and he was hiding in a building about 300 yards away. Law enforcement lost track of the shooter before he shot the president? How would he outrun police carrying a ladder and a rifle anyway? And if he placed the ladder down against the building and then got chased, why didn't cops seize the ladder so he couldn't climb back up? We asked the Secret Service if the shooter was chased by law enforcement, and they told us they, quote, believe local police had interactions with the subject. But local police are pushing back. They say their job was just traffic duty. Pennsylvania State Police telling us they weren't responsible for securing the building or property. So the Secret Service is pointing their fingers at the locals, and the locals are pointing their fingers back. You have a loose kook with an AR 130 yards from a former president, cat and mouse and cops while Trump was allowed to remain on stage. Why was Trump still allowed on stage if there was an active manhunt underway for an armed threat? ABC reports that police were looking up at the roof of the building a full minute before shots rang out. But just breaking tonight, a local Pennsylvania station is reporting that local law enforcement spotted crooks on the ground acting suspicious nearly a half an hour before the shooting. And they called it in. And another officer spotted him nearly a half an hour before the shooting, shooting took a picture of him and also called it in. Why wasn't any action taken? And later, people at the rally flagged crooks on the roof. Watch. Look, they're all pointing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, someone's on top of the roof. Look. There he is right there. Right there. See him? He's laying down. See him? Yeah, he's laying down. And so I'm here with you fighting my tail to get a sentence. What's happening? And this guy's still going to take back the White House because if we do, we're going to make America better than ever before. Yeah, look. There he is. Because we have millions and millions of people in our country that shouldn't be here. Dangerous people. Criminals. We have criminals. We have people that should not be here. It's much tougher than it happens. This was such a colossal security failure that many people are wondering if this was sabotage. Was somebody on the inside compromised? There's no evidence of that, but the way the agencies are handling this investigation is unacceptable. We're learning more details about the shooter. Reports say he had a transmitter strapped to his body and a receiver hooked up to explosives in the trunk of his car. He was trying to trigger an explosion as a distraction maybe before taking a shot. He purchased 50 rounds of ammo just before opening fire, just hours, and lied to his dad that he was going to the gun range that day. Finally, the FBI gained access to his phone, they say, but the Bureau says they don't have a motive, which doesn't track. Every one of these assassins or mass shooters have ideologies. They have digital footprints, and they want to be infamous. How is Crooks a ghost? 
The FBI couldn't find the motive of the Vegas shooter, the deadliest shooting in U.S. history. Never zeroed in on the Gen 6 pipe bomber. Manufactured the Russia hoax, even doctored a warrant to spy on Trump. This is the same FBI who cooked up the Gretchen Whitmer kidnapping plot and had informants involved with the Pulse nightclub shooting. The Pittsburgh FBI field office is running point on this investigation. Just happens to be the same field office that buried the Biden bribery tip in Ukraine. FBI Director Chris Wray won't resign, but Trump will probably fire him when he's reelected. We were seconds away from a live execution of a presidential frontrunner, and the Secret Service Director isn't being fired, isn't resigning, and promises it won't happen again. How do we know her internal investigation isn't going to be a cover-up? This woman destroyed her text from Jan 6th and blew up the White House cocaine. Congressional Republicans are calling for a House Select Committee on the assassination attempt of Donald Trump. Take this out of the hands of the feds and conduct hearings under oath on live television. Bring in the counter snipers, bring in Cheadle, bring in Crooks' pop. Primetime promises you we will never let them cover this up. Let's bring in former presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy. What you're hearing from the Secret Service and the FBI, is this acceptable to you? I think it's unacceptable level of non-transparency. And it's one thing, Jesse, if we're approaching this after the last few years where we have a perfect record of transparency, but we're not. You think about the Russia collusion hoax, the origin of COVID-19, the Hunter Biden laptop story suppressed on the eve of the last election with 51 intelligence officials or former intelligence officials signing off. We're at a place of low trust in this country. So I'm going to be guided by the facts. But what I will say is right now, more than ever, transparency is everything. The reason people don't trust the government is the government no longer trusts the people with the truth. And I think this is one of those occasions to say that, yes, we need accountability. We need transparency. President Biden should be doing a far better job than he has been. I think he would earn a lot of political points if he did. He should do it for the right reasons. But if he stepped up and said, you know, not only is this unacceptable in the United States, but the Secret Service failed in its mission and we're going to get to the bottom of what happened, that alone would inspire some confidence in the man who's supposedly the current commander in chief, but has done so many things, Jesse, he has fallen short on this one alone. And I think the reality is we're going to have to see other people, other leaders, hopefully the next president of the United States, Donald Trump, step up and fill that leadership void. We're now hearing reports that almost 25, 30 minutes before the shooting, there were two locals that photographed and then transmitted the photos and then called in that this guy was acting suspicious once they saw him on the roof, once they saw him on the ground. How is it, if you have a counter sniper team and all of these security officials, that no action was taken? Vivek, I just don't understand it. Look, I think that A, there's the facts of what actions were or were not taken, and it doesn't sound good based on what you've done, and I think you're doing important work in asking the hard questions that need to be asked. But there's the second question of the caginess of the existing apparatus to respond to those questions. And I want to draw a distinction, Jesse. There's a lot of people who do work in that bureaucracy who are individually good people. Look at the people who put their own bodies on the line. They were taking the gunshot instead of President Trump. That's their job, and at least they stepped up to do it. But that's different from the bureaucratic machine in Washington, D.C., and as Republicans, that's the distinction we need to draw. Are there individual good people mostly working in Washington, D.C.? Yes. But that bureaucracy becomes its own leviathan, its own machine. And I think a top objective of the next presidency, the Trump presidency, as I believe it will be, should be to dismantle that federal bureaucracy once and for all. And without that, we're not going to do it. The American people, they should know we will follow them to the gates of hell until they are brought to justice. Because hell is where they will reside. Hell is where they will reside. Go check out TrumpRap.com. It's pretty calm for original rap songs that drop like a bomb. Featuring AI Trump as DJT, hard-hitting lyrics, that's the key. Pressing issues, we address them all. Politics and music, we stand tall. Through rap, we speak. Critique so sleek, dynamic beats, unique and chic. Join the movement, feel the vibe. TrumpRap.com, where truth and rhythm collide. I know that everyone here will soon be marching over to the Capitol building.